Welcome to the Pittsburgh District of the United States Army Corps of Engineers. Located in the headwaters area of the Ohio River Basin, we operate and maintain numerous lock and dam facilities on the Ohio, Allegheny, and Monongahela rivers. These locks and dams were developed and constructed in order to serve as an aid to the navigation industry that uses these waterways. Prior to colonial times, these three rivers in their original state were navigable only on intermittent stretches or at certain times of the year. Even then, commercial use was restricted to shallow draft vessels or rafts. When westward expansion accelerated after the American Revolution, it became apparent that the growing economy required constant and sufficient water depth to meet the increasing demands of traffic on our inland waterways. By constructing a system of dams along the rivers, a stair-step-like effect of pools of water was created which assures that channel depth and width necessary for navigation interests are provided on a year-round basis. At the site of each dam, a lock chamber has been constructed to raise or lower the boats from one pool level to the other. It is the purpose of this film to demonstrate the safe and proper procedure for using the locks. In regards to the priority of lock usage, river traffic is comprised of three basic categories. The Secretary of the Army has determined that the order of importance to national interests gives top priority to the lockage of United States government vessels. Commercial vessels follow, and finally, recreational vessels. To the recreational boater, this means that patience is often required in the event of traffic congestion at a lock. Sometimes a small craft is asked to wait and lock through with other craft, or after a commercial or government vessel has locked through. When approaching a lock, it is important to be aware of the dam and the areas immediately above and below it. These areas are restricted to boaters and pose a great risk due to the possibility of being swept into or over the dam, while treacherous currents below can draw a vessel into the turbulence where it would capsize and be trapped. There are two types of dams that may be encountered on our rivers. The gated dam has an imposing superstructure which supports walkways and machinery used to adjust the position of its gates. This type of dam can easily be seen from both upstream and downstream vantage points and is well lighted at night. A fixed crest dam is simply a concrete wall spanning the river with the water passing over the top edge much like a waterfall. These dams are nearly impossible to see from the upstream side and boaters must be especially alert to their location. Also, the discharge from the lock chamber is directed into the area below the dam and could spell disaster to the unsuspecting boater. These areas are well marked with signs year-round and with buoys during the recreational boating season. A safe boater should be prepared for the unexpected. The following display shows a collection of items that might be carried on a vessel. These items would prove useful in the event of an accident or mechanical breakdown. A boat fender, fire extinguisher, tools, a life ring, boat hook, personal flotation device, whistle, an anchor, oars, first aid kit, and a coil of rope. Upon arrival at a lock, there are various ways of notifying the lock operator that lockage is desired. For vessels equipped with a marine band radio, a request for lockage can be made on channel 13, which is monitored by the locks. Secondly, a simple cellular phone can be used to call the lock. The phone numbers for the locks and dams are found in the navigation charts of each river. These charts are a wealth of information showing every navigable mile of the waterway, as well as marinas, fueling and grocery stops, bridges, and of great importance, the location of the locks and dams. Navigation charts may be obtained from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers at the address provided at the end of the film. 
Lastly, for vessels with neither radios nor cell phones, a signaling device is provided and located on the upstream and downstream end of the wall at each lock. A sign drawing attention to the device will be displayed at its location. The rope or pull chain should be held for about three seconds to allow the electrical current to travel the distance to the building. Once again, patience is required after signaling the lock operator. Provided that no other traffic is using the lock, it may take as long as 15 minutes to prepare the chamber for the next lockage. If waiting for a signal to enter a lock, it is important to stay well clear of the end of the guide wall as boat traffic may soon be exiting the lock and heading in your direction. Flashing traffic signal lights similar to those on use on our highways are positioned at each end of the lock chamber. A flashing red light means do not enter and stand clear. It is used to signal that either a lockage is in progress or that the chamber is closed for maintenance and repair. A flashing yellow light means to approach with caution and with your vessel under full control. A vessel must not enter the lock until a flashing green light appears or some other signal from the lock operator has been given. This means that the gates to the chamber are fully recessed into the wall and that the lock is safe and ready for entry.